I took some time off from the College of the Bahamas. I had a sabbatical. My family moved up to Canada for a couple of months, actually almost a year, as my wife was studying to do a master's degree. And I just took time to write. And I was supposed to be working on a novel, uh, a novel about Bahamian slavery called Blind Days. But in the meantime, in between them, as, as I was doing my research, um, ideas formed for a television show, a Bahamian soap opera. And um, when I was up there in New Brunswick, freezing my butt off, I used to find some solace in writing episodes for this TV series. I didn't know how I was gonna shoot it, how I was gonna produce it, but I knew that the first step was gonna be writing it. I started writing plays um, for a national audience in 1990. I was, I was 21 years old, not even quite 21 yet. And um, I've, I've been doing that for 20 years, basically, writing, acting, directing for stage. Dr. Sean is an amazing writer. He's an amazing playwright. Um, he's a legendary figure in terms of theater. I think the first, my first encounter with Dr. Strong's work was The Diary of Souls. Um, that's when I first I did COB, the first actually, the first play that I've ever seen outside of a church plays. This is the first time, you know, um, I've been doing a lot of media, broadcast media, but not producing and, and writing and directing for television. And so, you know, go big. <laughs> I approached Siobhan because I'd seen the work he'd done, music videos, I'd seen um, his uh, documentary film, May 3rd. Um, I'd seen his work and I knew that he could be productive and work fast and work hard and that he had a can-do attitude rather than a we can't do because X, Y, Z attitude. Trevon, I'd have to say, Trevon is one of, I thought I was the most organized person I know. Trevon is, is not the most organized person I know, but he's up there. I said to myself, this is the person to approach because he's got a lot of experience. Uh, despite his youth, he's got a lot of experience. He knows how to get things done. He knows how to move around obstacles. Some of the terms, I had no idea what the man was talking about, but Trevon really brought it to the table and, and, and helped me understand a lot about production. And it was just a matter of timing for him when he was gonna be free. And so it was a complete surprise to me when he said, okay, I'm ready. Because at first he was like, yeah, but I can't really look at this right now for about six, eight, eight months. <laughs> he came up to me and he was like, well, I wrote this series, I wrote a soap opera and I'm looking for a shooter. Are you interested? At the time, I, um, I was interested, but I wasn't able to commit to anything at the time because I was dealing with so many different things. But um, on the way to a job that I had to do, um, I opened my laptop and the script was on the desktop. Um, so I opened the script the first time and um, started reading episode one and I couldn't stop reading episode one. I read it from the beginning to the end. And I thought to myself, this is it. Right, and I didn't enjoy this at all. <laughs> he insisted that, well, he insisted that we plan. And I, you know, don't really like to have to spend a whole lot of time planning. Um, planning was overwhelming uh, at the beginning. Trying to shoot eight episodes you know, seemed like a, a lot to do. You're talking about eight episodes, various locations. You're talking about a cast of over 40 plus persons um, that would be needed. You're talking about a very small crew and a large, very extensive need for organization. We had to create breakdown sheets, these cursed forms that that explain what every scene requires, what costumes, what characters, interior, exterior, what props are needed. We had to basically create a plan for every scene. Uh, blocking it out, organizing it into um, a, a, a schedule that we could all meet made it really doable. And then we had to scope out 
locations? Where would we shoot? Whose house could we use? What bedroom? What living room? Where could we simulate a hospital room, etc.? Um, so we had to do a lot of that scouting and, and going on and, and, and talking through. Really, the first thing we had to do was break down the scenes and see where it is we needed to be um, and manage the time we spent in each place by thinking about what scenes we could do uh, in each place we went so we wouldn't have to go back again. It makes no sense to paint a bridge if the bridge is going to crumble. So you put first things first and make sure the foundation is well set. Make sure that the scenes, the shoot is organized so that um, you can put all the nice pretty finishing touches on it at the end.